Hey, good morning, everybody. We're out of the game, and I'm the host, Ohm Glenn, and it's Sunday morning. Uh, decided to get an early start and do something, you know, gonna, gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna play this ind independent little furry trash game that I found for a couple of bucks on PSN. Uh, partially, you know, because eh, I, I, I do achievement hunting uh, kind of semi-competitively with Raymond. Also, remember that name, Rata Ratala Ika. Because uh, I'm going to be talking about them. These guys seem to publish a lot of games. A lot of tiny, dinky little indie games. They're kind of like Nicalis, uh, which if anybody knows who that studio is. Uh, but look at this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is a game I would make. <laughs> it was a sunny, warm day. A puppy named Thunder was playing with the ball in the clearing. Uh, and it's suddenly a nuclear holocaust. Kaboom! Uh, that so powerful that it destroyed the home windows and uh, taken down all the trees around. Mom, Dad, Thunder, Thunder shouted, running into destroyed house. Yeah, you could tell that. Yeah, this English is definitely a second language involved in this. I uh, found only a letter in which it was written, "Give up, Thunder. Your parents are kidnapped, and you have to get a gun and join the army." Go. A big explosion. So, uh, you know, messing around with Raymond, we, we competitively challenge each other to do, uh, you know, for achievement hunting stuff. Because uh, it's fun. I don't know. Who cares? Uh, something I like to do as a side hobby. And I like to support small-time indie game makers. And this game is Mad Crazy Furry Trash, so who the hell am I to, you know, not support the little guys? But, uh, this, so this production studio, Ratala, Ratala Ika... Uh, which I still have yet to figure out what their origin is, and it's definitely, you know, English is a second language from what little research I have done. Um, they've, they've produced a ton of little games like these. And like they, They're, like, partially mobile games, but they all seem to mostly be distinctively, like, pixel art-based. Um, and I don't know if, like, I don't know if they're, how much involvement they have in the development of these games, because they all seem to, you know, just be, like, almost damn near student film project level. Uh, you know, or student student project level, I should say, not student film, student film, you know, different thing. But uh, but it seems like people tend to you know crap these games out, you know, in a certain you know a certain amount of expedience. Because uh, there's a game called Foxy Land. There's a game called Awesome P. There, there's hunt like well, I won't say hundreds, but there's definitely dozens of these games currently uh, made by the produced by the studio. Uh, but, you know, made by, you know, developed by other indie studios. Uh, and, yeah, like I said, sometimes I grab them on PSN just for the, just for the fun trophy hunts. Uh, Lord knows Raymond does. Raymond just friggin', that's, you know, he'll play all these little awful games to, just to get trophies. Uh, but, you know, every once in a while, the one that stands out. This one's not bad, all things considered. For a nice little simple, I don't know, it's not quite like Contra... It's not quite, you know, Metal Slug, you know, uh, and, you know, so what happens with, their, so to deal with this game is, you know, the limit is that when you fire, your character gets knocked back. Um, uh, one thing this game doesn't tell you is that you get more than one kind of weapon the later you, the further along you go. I don't know when you get them. It's either beating a boss or just progressing through the stages in general. Uh, each, there's five worlds, and I want to say five stages per world. And you have to find these hidden little, uh, uh, little, little computer boxes throughout the first three worlds to, you know, to get a uh, trophies for them. And there's some, there's some trophy runs, you know, plenty of trophy guides for this game. It's not that hard. I've played other rather like Rattala Ika games. At least that's how I think it's pronounced. It's either that or Ritalica, but I don't think it's for I don't think it's Ritalica. Ah, big bad. Uh. And some games, it's usually like, oh, just get five stars on a handful. They're never hard. It's never insanely hard to get all of the trophies in these games. You know, I feel like that's part of their selling point. They're like, oh, yeah, just make the... If you want to make quick money, you know, you can you'll never go wrong. There is a... The, the trophy hunting community is shockingly, you know, uh, ravenous. <laughs> but uh, Lord knows, I know, you know... Most of my gamer buddies don't give a shit about trophies and achievements. Uh, I don't know. I always think they're fun. It depends on the game. Sometimes it makes old games fun to play all over again, like uh, when they added trophies to Sonic and stuff. 
uh, you know, I never wanted to play Sonic 1 ever again, but if you do it for the trophies, then it's like, okay, well, I'll play it this way. How fast can I get through Green Hill Zone? You know, simple shit like that. It, you know, it kind of gives you a reason to try some of these old games again. Or like Mega Man. Jesus Christ. Mega Man trophies are the worst, though. Because they usually involve getting through a stage without getting hit, which is impossible in Mega Man. And I mean, OG Mega Man. Oh, also, so collecting all these little gems uh, makes your weapon more powerful. Uh, kind of um, cave story-ish in that way. But, uh, the first bunch of levels are pretty forgiving. Uh, this game, like the last two levels, are savage though, and I'm, you know, never quite sure if they, how much was involved in the, uh, you know, developmental process as far as uh, our in, uh, uh, research and development goes. Like I said, I'm actually kind of curious to know more about how these guys get these games made. You know what's the what's the long what's the long term planning what's the what's the what's the overarching goal for pooping out something like this? I mean, look all, all things considered, this is not bad. It's got some parallax in the background, the pixels, the artwork, the sprite work looks really nice. Um, it could be way more fun than it is, but like I said, it seems like this game was kind of like, oh, just get it done in a few months and get the hell keep moving. And like I said, who am I to talk mess? This is what this is probably what a game would look like if I made it. Although if it were up to me, I would make a modern, uh, I would make a modernization of uh, Demon's Crest. Uh, Demon's Crest? Yeah, Demon's Crest. I love Demon's Crest. Uh, or any game where you could play as a monster. Uh, is that everybody? Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. So here's the thing, though. The, what we would actually made me want to stream this today is I was looking around for, you know, I was like, oh well, you know, whatever. It's a game you could play as cute little German Shepherd and. You know, shoot, shoot other random animals from the from the book uh, Animal uh, Farm. Um, hold on, wait, this thing come back. But as I looked around, I found that there's plenty of trophy guides, but nobody actually beat it. <laughs> I didn't see any video of anybody fighting the final boss. And as I kept playing, I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to keep on going. This game's not that long. And the final boss is annoying. Whoa. Ah, that's right. This game had wonky ass... It had the weirdest screen shake concept. Like, it's like... You'll, you'll see it eventually. I can turn it off, but I want to document it for... Yeah, like that. The entire environment shakes because your floating platform died. Asshole. But hell, most of these, uh, most of the little indie games that get produced through this company, specifically through this company, all their their trophies are always something silly, like you know, die a bunch of times, and you know, uh, you know, find all the hidden things, you know, that that kind of stuff. You know, you know, look at the credits, you know, get a game over, you know, whatever. You know, and all sure, all that stuff is just throwaway shit. But uh, you know, every once in a while, games like this challenge you, and they're you know, fun in their own way. Uh, there was a game called Cyb Cyberian, ah, damn it, uh, that I toured through a few weeks ago, and it's it's uh, you know another side scroller where you play as a barbarian and you know it's again pixel art and ah oh, that game was not fun actually it was incredibly unfair it was poorly uh, balanced uh, I still have it saved and there was another one where I kind of almost got to the end and I was like man I wonder if I should just tough out this nonsense or tap out. I, I still have it saved. I keep thinking about beating it. Uh, those little, nothing tells you this, but those little exclamation points are, uh, you know what I mean? It's a total, you know, totally gonna die on those clips, so don't bother trying to... Oh, God! Right, we're already at the boss. So, what was that, four levels? So, the deal with these bosses is they just, you know, they have some overly simple pattern. You know, and they just, they go faster and faster the more you kick the crap out of them. God damn it. You know, eventually they'll just start spamming shots. But I remember that this guy at least wasn't that big a deal. Uh, eventually you do get one but one gun that uh like fires all the way across the screen, because the first default gun sucks. So yeah, whatever, this is no big deal. I toured through this before on my uh, Vita, because that's another thing about these games, is that they'll usually give you uh, a cross-buy, cross, cross -buy, uh, at least on PlayStation. Of course, PlayStation is one of the only consoles that still has a, a shared uh, 
platform with their portable device. I'm glad PlayStation never gave up on the Vita. Most people don't give a shit about it, but I actually thought the Vita was a great console. A nice handheld console, because it was mostly, it was, it was more accurate, you know, more, uh, you know, like how, <sighs> hold on, it's hard to concentrate and deal with all this shit. Um, so yeah, beat the monkey. Uh, but I liked the Vita because it was, you know, it was like how a modern, how cell phone games are and how cell phones work. And, you know, it's got touchscreen and stuff and it employs it without making it a gimmick and every friggin' thing. Uh, that being said, I can think of at least one or two games where I didn't realize the touchscreen was an actual functional, uh, <laughs> element to the game I was playing. And I was like, how the fuck do I do these power-ups? And I think I figured it out while wiping the screen off. <laughs> But I digress. Like I said, I know I'm in the minority on that stuff. I, you know, you know me. I'm not much for product loyalty. I'll go wherever the games are, and the Vita has a lot of fun games on it. And hell, it has a lot of the old uh, OG, you know, PlayStation stuff on it. And there's a lot of original PlayStation games I would love to, I love to bust out every once in a while. That this music is ridiculous. That's me five. Yep. You know, those little green port teleporter looking things are uh, your checkpoints, basically, for whatever reason. Ah, buggeration. Yeah, when I first tore through this, I didn't basically didn't die until the third level anyway. Uh, you know, now I probably jinxed myself. How uh, do I get out of here? Okay. Yeah, I always gotta respect indie games because I, you know, I haven't I haven't made a game. I would like to. I think about it all the time. And hell, I'm technically learning Unity and bl uh, what the hell do you call it? Uh, Blender, just mostly just to get into uh, virtual chat. And it's like uh, these are all the goddamn it, you dumb bastard. Uh, those are all the building blocks of making a game. It's like I don't want to have to build all of my own assets and shit, but. And uh, there is a world map, but it only ever shows up when you quit out of the game. Like Tank Top Bear. I'm gonna show this to Joey. Yeah, these guys will hog edges and friggin' shoot you off of them. Did I get the. Nope, I still haven't gotten my second gun yet. Yeah, don't be fooled by the bouncing gems. Uh, they'll do that whether there's a ground there or not. Ah, oh, this friggin' bunny sucks. Fortunately, he only takes three hits, but he's a little asshole. And, uh, I don't know enough about game design to know if these guys are on some kind of global timer... But I swear, every time I'm coming up towards a platform that I can be knocked into a pit on, there's always one of those pig guys that just happens to be walking up right at the exact time. Come on. Come on. Yep, figured I, uh... Alright, I'm turning off that screen shake. Ah, uh, wait, what? Uh, I guess I have to go to the main menu to do it. I'll do it after this level, then. That is the worst implementation of screen shake I've ever seen. Is there a floor there? Oh, there is a floor. There's a floor, Monty. Three guys left, and I still haven't found the, the box either. Aha! Found the box. left somewhere um, back at the beginning week now oh, where the hell am I god damn it right down to one spot I didn't want to go down Whatever. There's like no, you know, there's infinite lives in this game. There's no 
cheap out continue bullshit or anything like that. Like I said, these guys are just making games to, to make fun games, you know? Can't fault that. <laughs> God damn it. It's some leap of faith bullshit. I should have fucking found the checkpoint on the bottom of the screen. Two D bags, get the hell out of here. Oh, that's what those are. They're extra weapons. There's no difference on between between those and the and the little hidden computer box you're supposed to get. But so yeah, so that's now I have the bounty ball. Just make fighting a lot of bosses way easier. This will make fighting a lot of guys easier. You only really lose... Well, you lose the power if you take a hit, but you also lose it if you, uh... You know, you die. Which sucks. <laughs> I got greedy. Or, I mean, you lose the power-up, or you don't lose the actual weapon. said I realize now that I could uh, I might have missed one or two other uh, the problem with this bouncy weapon come on damn it I knew he was gonna do that the problem with this bouncy weapon is that it uh, is a little bit weaker than the default weapon uh, even when you power it up compared to the powered up version of the default weapon Jumping and shooting is a pain in the ass in this game. On the other hand, you get, you know, tons of iframes. the exclamation point under the screen. Thanks for that. spikes. If you have your back against the wall, it makes it super easy to deal with most of this nonsense. Freaking karate bunny. I hate any enemy that attacks you by landing on you. That's such a chicken shit move. Look at that people land on me before. It's not that painful. I was you know, more skilled uh, at this kind of... Oh, you bastard! Oh my god! Give me that! Oh, that's what the little arrow means. And now I've got the third gun. Yeah, I did not realize all this when I... No? Hmm. I guess it's still gonna be the same one no matter what level you're on. Look at this fool thinking he's slick, hiding behind the exit. Oh, that guy's uh, taking... He's soaking up them bullets. And being in these caves just makes me want to play, uh, get back into, um, Hollow Knight. I missed that game. I never did 100% it. 
only have to do one or two more super bullshit fights. Oh, man, I gotta do... There's like a whole boss rush thing I gotta deal with. That was what I was avoiding. And these bullets go way across the screen, too. Like, you can hit guys way off screen, and it's, it counts. Like, it, yeah, it's pretty uh, generous that way. I hate the design of these pigs, by the way. <laughs> they look horrifying. You. Thanks for working. has some more range. Can I... How do I make that bounce back over there? I don't want to go over there and fight this guy. This guy sucks. Hey, Snack, snack Station. Thanks for the follow. <laughs> a great name. <laughs> snack Station. <laughs> oh, well, I know where the hidden thing is. Probably the trickiest one I've seen, like as far as actually making the effort to hide it. Yep. Ah, really with the friggin' Yeah, this, this is what I mean about the whole global timer thing with these spikes. Because they're falling no matter what you're doing, god damn it. Nice try. Falling, you know, they're falling all the time always, but they somehow always manage to fall right when I'm, like, hit me square on the friggin' head. Ah, God. Savage. This game isn't even remotely difficult, by the way. I'm just being lazy. What can you do? It's 10 o'clock in the morning. The only parts, the only hard part is like maybe the last two bosses are a pain in the ass. <sighs> exactly what I was trying to avoid. This guy was the...
Right, flying, flying fox. Yeah, for the most part, his ammo just goes across the... Doesn't go all the way across the screen. But mine does. Trying to chase, trying to chase most of these bosses is a pain in the ass. Like they, they're rarely on any kind of a uh, pattern. Uh, this, this guy's on a pattern, but the rest of them is just, you know, they're just all over the place. You can, you can kite most of the bosses pretty good, except for this guy. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, my TV always resets to, um... Stupid, for some freaking reason. It's because it's getting old. I need to get a new television. The overscan always automatically turns on when I turn the TV on. It's the dumbest thing in the world. So all my stuff ends up off the screen that I can't see. whole another a gun cycle that he has that you're not seeing just because I'm so far away from him. But this isn't the fastest way to deal with them, but it's effective. Yeah, he always drops down in the same two spots, so it's just a matter of moving when he when he starts to move. And then just letting the kickback knock me back over uh, out of his range. Done and done. And those are the only two bosses that uh, you get a trophy for, which is interesting. Not sure what that says. Like I said, I often really wonder about some of the creative process for how they make some of these games. But yeah, see how much more destruction this stuff does when you uh, level it up? And it's great because you don't have to deal with encountering most of these guys. Unfortunately, trying to keep this stuff leveled up during a boss fight, is that's... It requires way more effort than I'm willing to <laughs> put into this game. Come on, dude. Uh, let's see, there's a, I see something up there. I guess I have to go all the way around. Unfortunately, you know, much like Cave Story, if I only, if, depending on what uh, gun I'm holding at the time, is the one that will get reduced in power when I take a hit. So I often switch back to the default gun. But if I can hit everybody in the, uh, you know, got these guys standing in a little, uh, you know, oh goddamn it, you know, being boxed in. 
shoot the proverbial fish in the barrel. There's literally no reason not to do that. Alright, where's this guy gonna come from? Yep, one of those guys. Ah, God damn it! I was trying not to go forward, but you have to, you have to press forward to counteract the kickback on this gun, on all these guns. So it puts you in, you know, in harm's way, which I presume is, I mean, you know, obviously on purpose. Oops! Hit my, hit my button. This music's a little, a little exciting. There's only... I only need to get 12 of them to get the Platinum. Like I said, the, the groups that come out of this, that come from this production studio, uh, or that seem to be produced by them, just must have the, uh, you know, the, the, the orders that, oh, don't worry about the trophies, it's, you know, you know just make it something simple people don't care about. And, like I said, you make some easy money on, uh, on PlayStation Trophy Hunters. Because well, these games are like $4.99 starting. And they're almost all, they almost always go on sale damn near immediately. There is a strong wind in the area. But you can use it to pre to perform longer jumps. Fortunately, this is not... You know, this, this is... There's only a few levels that have this nonsense on it. You have to wait for it. I guess this is this is all RNG because I can't make that jump without the uh, wind blowing the other way. I don't know if I've seen anybody speedrun any of these games at uh, GDQ or whatever. Some of them are more are more uh, speedrunny than others. There's a game called uh, Jack and Jill. And it's one of those auto run games where you know the the character just automatically moves, and you have to you, know, you just have to time your jumps and plat and bounce around the environment. <sighs> There's a platform down there. Waiting on the wind to stop. Jeez. All right, let's check it out. Ha. But uh, I was going to say, I think that Jack and Jill game would be very much a, uh, a speedrunning type game. Uh, there's a lot of games that are very reminiscent of, like, they lean on the, the Game Boy aesthetic, the, the old pea soup green pixel, eight pixel art style from the old Dot Matrix Game Boy. It's funny how that has become a, a almost an art form in its own right. the one for this level or not. I want to say when I first played through this I didn't know uh, you even had a second weapon until uh... um I can't remember when I when I figured it out. I want to say it wasn't until this level but but I know I remember that sign. Yeah, I'd basically never go back to the default weapon if I can avoid it, because it's just too short. It's powerful, but what a pain in the ass. Say there's nothing down there uh, below those uh, platforms. Oh, 
Oh, this weapon is so handy when it's powered up. Just anything with some reach. How the heck do I get up there? There's two of those uh, little TVs. Oh, I remember this spot. Don't believe I can make the jump from here. Oh, wait, well, I gotta wait for the wind. Well, while I'm waiting for that, sip on some nice coffee for the, for the, you know, the warm you up in this winter climate. Oh no! Hmm. Yeah, see, I don't know why it points at the thing, saying, acting like I got a new power. But. Unless. Does it, does it feel like this, this shoots further now? Eh, maybe. I don't know, like I said, those are unclear. Ah, leap of faith, baby! That sucks. Yeah, I think it made it shoot farther, because now it's shooting super lame. Hmm. Any chance that that's still back up there? On the other hand, if I die, I, you know, what, can, what can you do? And it's almost guaranteed I'm going to get killed by the boss at least once. Or by some of these bosses. It sucks losing losing my power ups to the pits. It's like I worked hard for these power ups. Also, it's interesting. Like I, I kind of I, I do like that you can go down through the platform just by pushing down. Usually it's like down and jump for most games. On the other hand, it super puts you in danger. Oh, spell. Welp. Welp. Oh, those are just uh, all over the place. No, nope, not that way. Give me. platinum no big deal but we're not stopping there we're going long play on this I'm beating this game uh, I guess on, there. on the other hand I don't have to worry nearly as much about collecting the boxes as this you know this game is not robust enough that you get a different ending for it at least not as far as I can tell You do have to kill everybody in the stage to get out of the, you know, to beat the stage. Must defeat all enemies before proceeding. Don't shoot me. He's gonna shoot me. Ah, no! Ha ha ha! Oh boy, that was close. Yep, yeah. that one any better, but... Jeez. Haha. <laughs> Caught him on the bounce back. Go. 
Kill him. Holy crap. There's still like four guys running around somewhere. I just have to go up higher. See if I can figure out where that was. Like, there should be another floating platform around here somewhere. Gotta love the enthusiasm in the sun. Oh, there's a guy. Alright, there's the first one of the security bears. Uh, you eventually get a gun that shoots, like, kind of grenades, I guess. That can hit him from, you know, both sides, because the guy just keeps walking through your explosions. Otherwise, chasing him around is a pain in the ass. Come on, come on, come on, come on, kill him! the wobbly effect of this, uh, the screen shake. Yep, never mind. suppose it's like, you know, it's not entirely desperate, but, you know, having a map isn't, you know, the worst thing you could ever do. Alright, he targets wherever you were. Ah, stuck in wind. Like the boss music sounds like the you know Mario 2 boss music. starts to speed up. And there's no wind-up to those shots. Like the minute he drops down, he's already firing off that shot. I was avoiding using this gun because it's weaker, but at least it gets him while he's still traveling around. And I don't have to uh, be, you know, jumping around so that he ends up in the air. Move Patrol, eat it. And could you imagine if he had knocked me off the cliff when right when he died? That's some fucking end of the gungeon shit. Alright, I think we're on World 4. I just want to change the... Turn off the stupid uh, 
screen shake. I can't imagine what the harder difficulty is like in this game. But yeah, you know, here's a nice little shot of the overworld. You know, nothing too crazy. You can see hell on the other side over there. That's going to be great. I still don't have my third weapon yet. Yep, falling stalactites as per usual. This is the style of the time. I like they could do better with this game would be you know when you're le you know this whole leveling up your weapon thing you know it's like okay sure that's that's a pretty cool idea but how about make it so that when you level it up it actually changes the weapon more than just I don't know like look it's just got some extra circles around it whatever but you know change it to a spread shot change it to a laser or a flamethrower uh, how about some kind of victory lap you know level shit for you know hard work and getting getting through without taking a hit. How comes nobody does cheat codes anymore? Cheat codes were fun. You know, like I said, just something something to spice up the gameplay a little bit. Like I said, I know it's a, you know it's a lot. Like these are obviously little little studios that are just making these games, you know, under some kind of time constraint if I were to guess. But. And if they're making this game in like a few months, you know, that's that's pretty damn impressive. But on top of, you know, nothing wrong with building on top of it. You know, if you're making a second one, hopefully it'll have more variety. Because I know there was a, you know, Foxy Land got a sequel. And if, you know, Foxy Land is like the definitive, like, mobile game. You know, you know, you get three stars per level. You play as a little fox collecting cherries and jumping on enemies, whatever. You know, same old shit. But uh, the second one uh, is still more or less the same game. Which, you know, the, you know should have been like, uh, uh, what was that game that... It started off as like a puzzle game, but eventually became a, uh, you know, the sequel was just a platformer, like a crazy platformer. I don't know, I just, you know, you don't have to be married to your one concept. But, you know, most people follow the money, which is fine. God damn it. You get other, you know, small studios that make a really good game and a really good concept, and then get trapped forever in like uh, feature creep, uh, or, or trying to keep up with the tech. And it's like, why is it taking so long to make a second Spelunky? Why is it taking so long to make Freedom Planet 2? Like the first two games were made completely independently, insanely simplistically, uh, and you know were effective. They were good games. Freedom Planet's an awesome, fun game. It's like probably still what I would consider to be one of the, probably one of the best, you know, quote unquote Sonic games I've ever played. Uh, because it takes the premise and, you know, and, like leans way more on the action side of it as opposed to just bouncing on enemies bullshit, which is like the most tired way to make a fucking platformer. So even Mario doesn't like entirely do that anymore. It hasn't for a long time. All Mario games, you know, pride themselves in being somewhat different, except for the NSMB games. And even those, you know, they're still pretty different. Oh my god, dude, with your slow-ass bullets. Are you serious? Your bullets are slow. Help, I'm stuck in the computer. These are sci-fi original copies of the Matrix. <laughs> your bullets are slow. Uh, That's from an old, old comedy bit in the show I used to listen to that, you know, when it was on. Holy shit, I can't deal with these two. I don't remember these guys shooting so much. Huh? 
Up to him first because I can bounce the bullets down into the bear guy after the fact. Also, I think that I hopefully my third gun is around here somewhere. Come on. Well, while I'm doing that, man, I can't believe he's surviving all of those bullets. Did you see how fucking hard it is to kill these guys? Why did that one shot him? <sighs> we pretty sure there's no giant pitfalls around here. God dang it. Again, need a map. Uh, a little more skill. I could use the knockback to my advantage more often in some of these parts because I know you can use it to bounce way up on the top of, like, kind of up where you're not supposed to be. But since you've got a killer ready to leave the stage anyway, it doesn't entirely matter. It would be almost a usable exploit for some of the bosses. I'm trying to think. This is World 4. I think I know what the fourth boss is. I don't know. My bullets went over the bridge through the handrails. My imagination or is this gun killing the hell out of guys? Just shy of being really good. I mean, like good uh, chip tuny music. Could use a little more production in it. Get him. Sweet. Anyway, I think I skipped a bunch of stuff. Half the guys so far. Yep. Okay. Isn't there a platform here? somewhere. Jeez, still like eight guys running around. Nope. I'm gonna lose my power up. 
Stop that. Oh my god. Oi, costing me a power up, bitch. Whoa. Like, this thing's shooting all the way across the screen, or at least a lot further than usual. So yeah, there's a there's another unexplained little power up that seems to at least extend the usefulness of this gun. Unfortunately, you lose it if you die. Ah, fuck's sake. Let's see, I got those guys. Is there more area over here? Yes, there is. I'll keep using this if it's actually going to be useful. Yeah, that was another leap of faith. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see an exclamation point that says I can't go down there. But I'm not going to go down there. I don't want to lose my goodies. Damn! Yoink, thank you! Alright, how the hell do we get up there? To a sliding platform. Why is there an exclamation point here if it's there's actually a floor there? It's in clear defiance of everything this game has taught me. I don't know how far over that guy goes. I don't know if I have a lot of room to escape. Still a guy way above me. Damn, game. See how that works for this guy at all. Oh, there we go, finally. I don't remember how we get up to the. I don't think I can make that jump. Uh, nope. many guys you have to kill and they're just all over the place. Yeah, this gun is not it's only good for like bosses and stuff mainly. Or that bear with the shield. <sighs> Alright. Cause they, otherwise the bullets go right through everybody. There's a hot. Well, at least the stalagmites don't, uh. Yeah, they don't go through the floors. Alright, dude, with the friggin' grapefruit bullet.
I just the background just makes me think of uh, Starbound. This is like the room I would have made in that game. I really don't remember these guys' slow ass bullets following you for so long. Well, it goes down there. Oh, uh, you got me, you rat bastard. God damn it. Oh, hey, there's a little hidden thing over there. Now I gotta try to get it. Yeah, I don't remember this part at all. I think I skipped right through all this. There's almost no reason to collect all the other uh, little hidden thingies. Except that I think they give you more power somehow or something. It'd be nice if we reduced knockback. That'd be great. When he goes up there, he's gonna, or when he comes to the edge, he's gonna knock me into the pit. Jeez, this guy's tough as nails. Oh shit, there's a guy on the platform next to me. Some elevator action shit now. Oops, we need to get stuck on that. Last checkpoint, goddamn. We could probably make that jump. Nope. There's, I don't want to say half a dozen of these little, there's like three other games I can, or two other games I can think of, this one being the third, uh, that you, you know, it's a little pixel-based game where you play as a some kind of fight dog, and as far as I know, all the studios that make them have nothing to do with each other, except that they're all on, they're all produced through this, uh, Radalaika company. Uh, but... Like, it would, how, you know, how cool would that be if there was, like, a little crossover with all three of them? Because there's another one called Doggerai, uh, which is, like, you know, you're a dog samurai. And it's, like, that one is one of those Game Boy reminiscent ones. Um, which I have that on the Switch, and I'll probably play it eventually. You know, if we ever get to a point where we can be socially non-distant from each other, I'd like to have my boys back in, in the, on the show. Because I like co-oping with my friends. Although we've been, you know, we've been supplanting that, supplementing that by... You know, having a peanut gallery over Discord, which is still nice, but it's not the same. But, uh, so yeah, I do tend to hog on, to, hold on to these, you know, some of these, what I call furry trash games until, uh, you know, until I can play them with my boys. But, so yeah, there's Dog Eye, One Dog Story, and this. Uh, like I said, having nothing to do with each other except that they all star a dog protagonist. Um,. 
But I'm, I'm the sucker for crossovers. And like I said, as far as I know, these guys are all produced through the same company, so you, it wouldn't be that hard to get them to communicate with each other. Ah, that dude looks gross. <laughs> I'm not sure where, out of where, like, Rada Laika is uh, based. I uh, originally thought maybe they were, like, Ukrainian or Russian or something, but they did just as likely somewhere in North America, like, I don't know, French Canadia or something. hold on to this during a boss fight and it'd be good to go. Otherwise, boss fights take for friggin' ever. I hate you, pig. I thought I saw a platform over there. Thing here, maybe. Seems suspicious. Also, you know, being able to shoot upward would be nice. Ah, there it is. Yeah, see, this one shoots a lot further now with that power up. And that's the only one I see that changes that way. Everything else you have to level up with the little blue crystals. Yeah, honestly, most of what gets me killed in this game is my own impatience. Which, eh, that's nothing new. Slog. Thank you. You're gonna hurt. Of course. God Thank you. Friggin' die. Nope. I guess there's another one of these shooty things right above me now. Nobody's dropping hearts. Sweet! Forgot that that uh, good checkpoints give you your health back. Thank God. Oh yeah, when you level this thing up, it's usually more explosions. More explosions! To quote one of my favorite Borderlands characters. Uh, that's it. I'm not going to bother exploring. I think I've only got one more level to go. I'd rather keep my power-ups until then. Yeah, look how much damage that does if you can land it. Alright, I'll go this way. There you go. Give me that. It would be nice if that, like, maxed out your weapons or something when you're all fooled up, but whatever. Yep, boss fight. Sweet. Good. Alright, this guy's annoying as shit.
But there's a few little workarounds to dealing with this guy. Uh, if I wear him down too soon, he'll just be he'll be spamming the screen with those uh those little little handy bullets. But if you can get him to be pressed up against the wall, like on like this platform or the next one on one other side, he'll uh, he'll only be able to shoot one of those, and he can just wail on his face. I just wait for him to come down here. But he will also come after you while shooting that machine gun, and that will hit you. Like that that stays targeted on you. Come on, dude. What are you doing? Where are you? Okay, what are you doing? Come on. I fell through the floor. Are you fucking for real? Like, well, there goes all my power-ups. Thanks for that. So at this point, the explosion thing is the only way to deal with them. God damn, I can't believe it just fucking... That's the downside of the... Of the, you know, being able to go through the floor just by pushing down. Because, you know, most games it's down and jump, like I was saying earlier. But if you can accidentally input down... Trust me, this is not going to stay this uh, amicable for much longer. If he stays over there, I can... Oh, not so much for that. Oh, crap. And I don't want to be on this side of the screen. It's kind of centered, but... It's like right there. That's the limit of the machine gun. I don't think it, like, where I am determines where he's going to go next. He just kind of does whatever. But he will, he will change positions faster the more I kick the crap out of him, so you just have to kind of get in there and get your hits in. Hell yeah, get the hell out of here. Yeah, that guy was a pain in the ass the first time I played through this. Ha ha ha, it's not over yet. Yeah, what is this guy? Hyena? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta get shot of that. Uh, everything burned out. What happened here? <laughs> There's a lot of fucking beady ass eyes. <laughs> uh, oh, hey. Oh. So, yep. Yeah. Are we running through hell or a sunset? Either one. It can be two things. Ah. You know, this whole time I kept thinking that guy was carrying a pitchfork, but he's... No, see, that guy's carrying a pitchfork. But the other guy was carrying a gun with a bayonet on it, apparently. Oh. I know what to do. Wait, what? Did I... what? Gotcha. That's what I was wondering. I was like, did I not go down far enough? Clearly I didn't. Damn it. Pretty sure that's as far as I needed to go. At least it keeps all that information when you, uh, you know, do whatever here. You know, whatever, whoever you've killed and whatever you've collected stays. Man, this friggin' Bowser's Castle crap. Hey, look, a little red guy. Like Ratarang from Mau Mau. 
for anybody to whom those words make sense. Holy crap, jeez. Calm down, dude. So I don't know if there's a fourth uh, gun of some kind. So usually, like the last time I did this, I just tore through the whole game. Uh, yeah, that's the other side of that area I died in. Yeah, there's something to be said about like something I like about some of these you know indie games that are retro, indie games that go with the retro pixel art style. Uh, the ones who I kind of feel get it right are ones like this, where they employ a lot of uh, you know what you you know what people have learned from modern game design, uh, as opposed to just trying to make look, make it look like an NES or Atari game, which I I do not I don't think there's any game where they make the pixel where they make the sprite the character sprite so freaking small. That better not have been the only checkpoint I had. All right. You know, I hate when they, when they, when they think, oh, ah, look how cute and retro this is because the, you know, the sprite is like eight pixels high. And it's just like, no, that's crappy and not that fun to look at. It's like it just comes off as being kind of cheap and easy. I'd rather, you know, rather be a nice big sprite running around the screen. You know, something that can be less about it being interpretive. Yep. His little death animation makes me think of the, um, the old DuckTales game. I was gonna say, I was pretty sure there was a floor there. Uh, all this stuff starts to look the same. God damn it. Patience rising. Ah. Yeah, there's no rhythm to these to any of the movement in this game. It's all just like everything is individually just doing its own thing. So it's not like pattern recognition per se. Alright, you rat bastard. Did you see how that stupid ball just bounced backwards? Like, thank you, ski ball. Oh, great. This level has that wind mechanic again. Oh, you gotta be fucking shitting me. Uh, why isn't that guy perma dead? Knockback is fucking ridiculous. That was with the wind at my back, too.
You know, there's one point where there's a guy on a platform so small that it just knocks you into the pit. You have to basically come in with iframes on. There's, there's no way to deal with the guy. Sheesh, you see that? I don't think it... Yeah, it seems to only matter for the... Um... I'm waiting for the wind to pick me up. Should be able to make that jump with the wind in the right direction. Right now I'm just collecting them just for this, you know, just to spite the game. And drink some coffee. See, it sucks that this is like, you know, there's no timing. It's all RNG. You know, it doesn't go a little bit left and a little bit right. I like that background there. It's really pretty. Like I said, I can't tell if it's supposed to be a sunset or lava. They might running around the mouth of a volcano. Come on. Unless I'm supposed to go around from the other side, which seems like horseshit. Damn! This guy's vicious! He's like the most vicious enemy in the whole game. Yeah, I'll look now which way is the wind blowing. What do you friggin' know? Come on. Give me my power ups. Whoops. Alright, we're leaving. Still got a handful of bad guys to kill. shows up at all just uh, <laughs> vibrating against the environment. Another thing, I don't know if the, uh, if these, I think it just depends on who makes it and how they make it, but a lot of these old games don't have the, god damn it, the interlacing <clears throat> that the original games had. So like when you take a hit, you know, and your character just disappears uh, in, a, in a recording because it's, you know, because of the de-interlacing. It only show it doesn't show every single frame. It just shows the uh, it just shows up as the character being like invisible, but it's actually you know that's just how it looks through the through a recording. Oh. Ah, 
God damn, dude, that knockback is ridiculous sometimes. I feel like it's knocking me back further than it used to. So it looks like this bear has a mustache. Like a big push broom mustache. Oh, you bastard. one I have not been counting weak whatever I mean, you can't do shit if the wind is blowing damn it I tried to jump alright rat trap having fun with that, but now it's just getting me killed. breezy out here. Uh, still six guys to go. At least the stages are becoming more linear, you know, which is not usually a compliment, but maybe you just want to get the shit over with. <laughs> Shots. Yeah. Okay, yeah, now that puts my shots way off screen, which would be really handy if I can stay alive all the way to the final boss, but I don't think I'm on the last level yet. Wow! Oh my god, did you see that? The fireball actually saved me from insta death. That's funny. That's what I'm talking about. Speedrun strats. Start a death, a death boosting. It's all in there. Them iframes. Save those frames. The physics on these, uh... On some of the items in this game are really weird. Oh shit. Thank god. Fucking wind is not that strong, but it's just enough to be annoying. Plus that, plus my kickback. I don't think that's it, because there's... Yep, this is the last one. Because there's one part that got me killed so many times, and it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I'm just going to play it safe on this guy. Why not? bullets are bouncing off the edge of the <laughs> precipice.
Jesus, calm down, dude. Damn. Fucking maniac with the itchy trigger finger over here. Ugh, I don't want to go wherever that is. I'm going to go back up first. Make sure I didn't miss a guy up there, which I did. Oh, nice. Ah, oh, this is this is this is comfortable. Everybody get comfortable. Yeah, buddy. I should go down and get that heart. Where did it go? Oh boy. Jeez. It is out of here. Give me that. Oh, for anybody who wonders where all of the uh, little hidden TVs are. Looks like I may have found them. Ugh, come on. regular shots. If I, can, if I can hold on to this until the final boss, I've got it made in the shade, I think. Pretty sure there's a guy on that platform waiting to kill me. Because one of these platforms has a dude. Ah. Well, there goes all that. Oh well. Whatever. I don't need it to beat the boss. See, yeah, these little gravestones help you mark where you killed the guy, so it means I've already been up there. Hmm. Yeah. I think I still got a level to go, because I remember I remember one part that was screwing me over big time. Check this guy out. This guy's ridiculous. He goes all spelunky on you. And he's shooting Hadoukens. It rains hearts that he will go nuts for. Alright, so this, you know, so you gotta break your parents out of these uh, little cryo prisons. And the easiest way to do it is to just keep firing this gun. And there's no point in chasing him when he's going after the heart, because he'll go after it whether he has full health or not, which is stupid. Uh, you can kind of fake him out by... Yeah, and then you just friggin' corner yourself and 
hopefully your heart drops down right on top of you. It's like, I should stick to one parent, but who ain't gonna, anybody got time for that? The amount of time it takes you to reset where you are, you're wasting chances just shooting. And you gotta, you gotta free them both anyway, and still kill the guy. But since this shit kicks you back so far... I'm uh, surprised I haven't dropped a heart yet. There it is. Uh, looks like even his iframes... Uh, uh, kind of protect me. Like, he doesn't hurt me as long as he's uh, partially invincible, too. Yoink. Like, this is actually insanely forgiving. Damn it! Unless that happens. And then he friggin' just hides on you. Like I said, it's not the most effective system in the world, but it, it gets the job done. It's the only system I found that works, because doing anything else to deal with this guy just gets you killed. A lot of time chasing those hearts around. This guy respawns every couple of seconds. Damn it! And they always come down from this side, so you just gotta kinda hang out. And hopefully it pops up. Damn it! Another I never got another heart spawn. Ugh. And the, uh... The explodey, explodey gun doesn't do much good against this area, because the range is too short. Goddamn, he fucking wore me down. And jeez, he fucking magnetizes to the hearts. Fortunately, you only have to hit him three times, but these iframes last for friggin' ever. See, the bouncy bullets do the most damage to him. Uh, but, you know, the problem with uh, using it to try to rescue parents is how friggin' far it kicks you back. So even though this does less damage, it's better to just, uh... It's better to just you know, rest against the wall shooting the bullets. And honestly, if you wait until the... Sheesh. I was going to say if you wait until the heart's done, but now the hearts just keep coming no matter what. I think they always come at the same amount of time. I just don't know how long amount of time that is. You basically want to grab him before he does. But, like I said, the amount of effort it takes to chase his ass around. On the other hand, if he's bouncing all over the screen... I think I was wearing down the dad's tube the whole time I was doing that. But yeah, the, the thing to do is to just keep jumping. It's kind of like the opposite of fighting Shadow Link back in the old Zelda 2. Because uh, he'll basically just read your moves. Or read your inputs. Right, mine, bitch. Although the smart thing to do is just the hearts almost always come from the left side of the screen is to just and say that and then it falls to the right side of the screen.
Definitely needed that. Yeah, and you can't hurt the, uh, you can't hurt the parents' cryo chamber until you take this guy out. Use a heart. God damn it, you gotta be shitting me. <sighs> I had him. Guy with a pain in the ass. It's like another heart could have came down at any time and it comes down right when he fucking gets it. I'm starting to think they weren't even gonna show up at all. That starts happening. That did not happen in the Vita version where the bullets bounce backwards off of, you know, literally a pixel on the ground somewhere. Damn it. She was almost done. side of him running up into the corner of the screen is that he's less likely to grab the hearts. Just to keep them from out, from him get uh, keep him from getting them. Ah, you dumb bastard. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> that one on purpose. Oh, jeez. Oh, hell yeah. That's my heart. And there you have it, folks. Easy breezy. This is the story about a brave puppy named Thunder, about, about his angry enemy, and about his vengeance to find his family his love. <laughs> about his vengeance to find his family his love. Well, that's how a sentence works for you. Hey, Wild Art Arcade, how you guys doing? Oh, you got here just in time. <laughs> I just finished this game. Uh, not bad. Beat it in under two hours. Uh, but yeah, look, look at this little... I like these little... Uh, these little tiny indie games, but uh, there's this production studio named Rada Laika, or what the heck ever. It's, that's how it's spelled. Uh, and they they help out all these little indie guys get their games made. Mostly, I guess, mobile games, but they always port them to all the consoles. And they're simple little easy breezy games. A lot of them have furry characters in them for one reason or another. Um, 
And I figure most people buy them on PlayStation because they're really easy platinum trophies, and you know, which most you know, the people who bought, people who are into that, that's what they do. And I feel like these guys make a lot of their money 